And welcome back, everybody. This is Movies and Beyond. I'm Callum. That's Kyle. Kyle, how are we doing today? Bit warm, isn't it? Bit, it's been a warm day. Yeah. Been t- Look at my pasties. Like, I'm two different tones. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Extremely. Uh, you had a, you had a fun weekend. You don't know what your weekend, you know, apart from play Fallout. No, I pretty much just been playing Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the sun's been out. I'm like, yep, nope, I'm staying in. Yeah, <laughs> like a vampire. Fucking hate vampires. Yeah, you know, not prejudiced against vampires. Just hate them. I think that's what that means, though. Yeah, you know, Do you I love off vampires. Weekend. Uh, Played Fallout in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah I, I went. We, well, we went shopping yesterday, and my mum's car sort of not necessarily broke down, but because it started smelling like shit, we stopped the car, and then we had to walk all the way to the fucking uh, petrol station, get some oil. Hey, you up. could you could have got it home. I'll take we, petrol we, station. Well, no, because there was all traffic because of the marathon that they were doing. Oh, fucking hell. So it, it took the absolute piss what's, to get what's that? back and forth. Uh, so, right, how can I explain this? So, do you know how you walk? Sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Right, it's that, but a little bit faster. <laughs> you can do that faster? You can. Okay. Yeah. Why would yeah. Why would someone choose? You know, just if they actually love their body and love themselves <laughs> to take care of their body. <laughs> yeah. Want to, want to maintain a, a good, perfect healthy physique. They want to be healthy with themselves. I don't know what that means, mate. So let's just get into our first topic. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes has had a pretty successful weekend. Some would say a healthy... A healthy (laughs) healthy weekend. It has indeed. Um, Not too crazy. I think it's the second highest opening in the franchise behind uh, War. Um, Yeah, $131 million opening weekend worldwide. That's really good. That's a nice, solid opening for the Apes franchise. You know, yeah, especially when it's when did the last one come it's out? It's been seven years. Yeah, that's that's good. That's I'm I'm really yeah. happy that people are still have the interest in it. That I still have the interest in it as well. Because we like we mentioned in our review, we went into a pack screening. Yeah, on a Thursday night. Usually the yeah. Friday night I, one's the busiest. We went to see we went to see Fall Guy just the week prior, and you know, again, yeah. it was a was it a Thursday as well, wasn't yeah. it? And you know, it's Ryan Gosling. You know, you've got a great cast in there, Emily Blunt. You've got a really nice, simple, go to cinema, have a great time, fun action film. And no one was, no one was there. Uh, yeah. And it did, you know, uh, we we didn't we didn't really speak about this much, but Fall Guy is doing pretty bad with numbers, yeah, which is no. quite sad because the film it's a is great pretty film. damn good. If you if yeah. you haven't seen it and go out and see it, but I'd also say if you haven't seen Apes yet and you've got a choice this weekend, you can only see one. Go see Apes. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think if yeah. that's what I'd also say. Yeah, I I I spoke to someone who I work with, and and they just gave their general thoughts briefly. It was literally just like a passing moment, so it was literally very brief thought. Did they just walk past you but, and go ape together strong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So uh, he asked me if I went to go see. It. I said, yeah, I, re- I really really liked it. And he was like, really. And I'm like, yeah, I thought it was pretty damn good. You know, it 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 lived up to the hype, I think. You know, it as a movie, it's a bit wibbly wobbly for certain aspects of it. So say for the you know, it doesn't answer much like me when I'm doing that fast walking variation. <laughs> more, 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 more. It's a shame we don't have a fucking soundboard for that. Yeah, no, so you know, the, the movie's getting really good. I mean, what's it out on Rotten Tomatoes? 
That's, that's what I'm interested in. We didn't we have a look at that. Yeah, you have a quick look at that if you can. Because last that's time I checked, 80 it was 80 something. something. Yeah. yeah, it was like 80. 87 uh, or 85, I'm going to say, or maybe even 82. Yeah, like I say, wrong, like, you know, let's be real, like, you know, Rotten Tomatoes, yeah, it's a it's a good source to tell if a yeah. movie is critically good, but at the same well, time, it's, it doesn't If you always... know how it works, like us, we yeah. know it's an aggregate, and we know that a film could have 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, but that just means... A hundred, you know, let's say it's got a hundred re- reviews. Every single one of them reviewers gave it a six out of six out of ten. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it's a ten out of ten film because it's got a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It just means this is a percentage of critics that thought it was above average. That's all the Rotten Tomatoes thing really is, and. It does get misused sometimes, but like we say all the time, we get excited when we see films we're looking forward to and they get a good Rotten Tomato score. It, yeah, it definitely helps. It does, it, it because doesn't... the general movie-going audience doesn't know how it works. So they look at that and go, wow, Rotten Tomatoes give it 86%. This film's got to be good. Mm. That's how the general yeah. movie-going audience looks at it. So, Yeah, I mean, there's films that have a, a quite a low Rotten Tomato score. I quite like I enjoy it. You know, uh, Bullet Train, uh, yeah. that's, that's on, what's that on, 60, 70? That's 50, like that. 54%. So that's, Fucking hell. Yeah, it's technically but I, I really like it. I, 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 I Bullet mean, Train, it's, yeah, it's my sort of film. Exactly. So, you know, but yeah, it's on 80% Kingdom with 234 reviews. Yeah. And then obviously the audience score... Uh, over a thousand, it's at seventy nine percent. So more or less the same, I in think. In line, and yeah, and this is the start to a new franchise. Well, this is the start to a new trilogy. It's the first one. It's introducing new characters. It's yeah. It's got it's got a lot. It needs to get yeah in the film hundred percent. And I I think seriously, I think it I think it was fantastic. I think it was. You know, it wasn't perfect. The film had some weird editing, you know, bits, but and the pacing for me, I didn't feel the pacing as big of an issue as some people have. I know we, yeah. we went to go see it and said it was a bit long, but I, I loved every sort of minute of it. It was just kinda Yeah, I'm just I'm glad this had really good numbers at the box office. It's getting good reviews. It just means... The story you know, can continue now. It can continue now, which I want it which, to. I want to see, well, let's see where this goes. It's, it's on the right track to make some good money. So hopefully it can stay on track and not have a massive drop in its second weekend, which I don't think it will because it's only competition no. next weekend is if Imaginary Friends with Ryan Reynolds, two completely different Yeah, audiences. I think that'll be a very much like a kid's yeah. sort of film. This isn't... You know, you can take your kids to see this if you want, but... This is definitely like a film that sort of just, you know, the, the Planet of the Apes franchise has sort of grown really massive ever since, I think, Dawn. I think Dawn was like the Winter Soldier of, of the Captain America That's, trilogy. I, I even think Dawn came out before Winter Soldier. Did it? No, no, I don't think it did. I think Winter Soldier came out in April and just Dawn the, came just out Just this comparison, June. though, obviously, if it could, if, 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 yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. It is definitely the Winter Soldier, the Empire Strikes Back, however you want to say it, of that franchise. Yeah. Now... It is. It is the best one. It is something that'll might shock you a little bit. This weekend, I watched War, because I was just feeling it, and I thought, I'll stick War on, I've only seen it, like, three times, and it's been seven years since it came out, so I'll stick War on, I'll watch War again. Um, I, you know, after watching it, I was like, it's definitely the second best Apes film. Mm-hmm. After watching War again, it's War's really fucking good. It's probably it's I don't I wouldn't say it's far off War, but they are going to be tied for a second place for. It's like, the thing. A lot of people say, over. yeah, but a lot of people say like War's not that good. Like not a lot of people like War because of how slow the pacing gets pulled back compared to like Dawn. Yeah. It's like. Do you really just want them to repeat what they did in Dawn? Yeah, no. And, like, the emotion in yeah. war. The the emotion in war, especially with seven years, you know, when he's seeing his son in the other 
camp, you know, in the other yeah. cage across from him and all that stuff. And it's like, this is a little CGI ape and I care so fucking much. Yeah, I like to think that, you know, Matt Reeves didn't want to sort of overdo it. He made it a quite a condensed story, and that's what I really like about yeah. it. He didn't. He could have gone crazy and have an ape shooting guns and have big battles and all that bollocks. But he's done that. But he didn't. He, he's done that. Yeah. He did well, an uh, ape yeah, he, riding he, he, a horse yeah. with two machine guns on Dawn for the Planet of the Apes. We've seen that. Yeah, yeah we've got a really nice, uh, you know, personal story again with Caesar. He just follows Caesar. It goes through a very traumatic event. And, you know, because you think, oh, he's sort of, like, winning at the end of Dawn. Like, things just keep getting better, and then war happens, and it's like, oh, my God, there's a big shift here. But, yeah, Kingdom, anyways, really happy it's got numbers. It just means that a sequel is more than likely going to happen now. We get more of the stuff we like. Go out and vote with your wallets, everyone. That's what we always say. You know, people uh, who I work with, and, you know, they've got the fire sticks, and it's like you can get everything for free on it. And they say, you sure, Cal, I'll get you one of the fire sticks if you want, and you just watch everything for free. And it's like, I I have to get into this, not argument, but I explain every time. And it's like, I really prefer to pay for the entertainment that I like, because if you're paying for the stuff you like, you're going to get more of the stuff you like. So. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's the experience for us. We really value that. You know, going to IMAX. Even this film wasn't even IMAX, but we just sort of value yeah. that a bit better. We don't have to fuck around with all the sketchiness with the fire yeah. sticks and the quality is just shit most of the time. Even when we was going to see Madam Web, saying. even when we was going to see Madam Web, we were still excited because we was off to the cinema. Exactly. Even though we walked yeah. out forty five minutes in, but still, <laughs> what I've got pint. Yeah, <laughs> go on, walk out. Got, for that. Got, got pint. Game pool. Go home. <laughs> Right. I said it was sexful. <laughs> Successful. <laughs> Time. We'll have a sex <laughs> fill later. Anyway, <laughs> next topic. Chris Pratt. He's been doing some interviews lately. I think this is for Garfield. We've got Garfield coming out in about two weeks. So, well, next week, actually, I think. So this kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's probably for Garfield. I didn't see where it was from because I was just too happy about what he said. He got asked if he's going to return as Star-Lord or join James Gunn at DC. And he said, well, you know, why not both? Maybe both. Who knows? Both. I think it's 100% both. Yeah, I, I'd say this would be a problem because I know it's like in their contract where they can't actually star in a rival like one of their main... If you're a main star... I, in Marvel, I, I, think, I think there was something in the contract yeah. where it's like you can't go to the, the opposition's, you know... But here's the thing. Side. When you're as big as a star as Chris Pratt, I think you can do what you want. And he'll work May- into his new contract. Maybe, but I'm I, what I'm what we're going to continue with saying is I don't think that really matters now. I feel like the whole rivalry between... Yeah. Marvel DC, it's over because, like Kevin Feige even said, like, oh, great that you know even a DC film it gets people excited to go to the comic book, uh, see a comic book film because that helps everyone. Yeah, and he's been saying that since 2015 and stuff like that. But then you're getting people like Jason Momoa who get on stage and go fuck Marvel. <laughs> but it's like if they're winning, you're winning. Yeah, that's yeah, that's how it. I mean, I like Jason Momoa, but yeah, if they're winning, you're winning. Well, just you... it's just probably a marketing yeah. thing. I don't think he really hates Marvel at all. I just think it's like, you know, fuck it, throw for, for, for some, you know, yeah, some throw some wood on the fire. But, just for shits and gigs, he's fun. So he said he's a hundred percent returning as Star Lord. Now, I'll ask you this first: Do you think that could be in that legend? You know. Uh, that show they talked about on the movie was it? It was a film, wasn't it? Where Star Lord's on Earth, the legendary Star Lord. Do you think it'll be that? Do you think it'll be in the Avengers film? To me, it makes sense to be in the Avengers film because he's on Earth. I don't see him just standing by as something's happening. You know, uh, or do you think it's going to be a Star Lord 
solo project. Just a quick one on this, and we'll go to the DC stuff. Uh, I I think it'll probably be both. A lot. Of, uh, oh, I think hundred percent both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably both. Uh, you know, I can imagine it. Why not? It's we love Star Lord. I feel like we haven't had enough of Star Lord because we got a lot of Tony, got a lot of other Avengers films, and I know obviously. Star Lord is in two of the Avengers films, but it's like barely in one of them. Yeah, I want to see more Guardians. Yeah. You know, I I want to see more Guardians as well. Um, and I, I love Chris Pratt, and I don't know why he's he gets a lot of the hate he gets online. It's all like it's it's religion based it, politics and stuff. It's from what I've seen. Which is all you know. Which is what I suppose he wants you to see. What I've seen is is a great guy, but still, going over to DC with James Gunn. Who do you think he could play? And don't you dare say fucking Blade, because I know that's what you want to say. Because you say that to everything. Damn it! I'm sorry. No. I ooh. I'll come down to your house. This is a key to your house, Kyle. Who who could he play now? Don't know. I mean, he, he'd make a great Green Lantern. Yep, which is a, which seems to be the general consensus online. Hal Jordan. Yeah. Which. Yeah. But I think he'd want to do something different. Yeah, because to me it seems DC. a bit too similar to Star Lord. Yeah. As Hal Jordan. Um, yeah. A lot of people are saying Booster Gold. Mm. The the man who travels back in time with future technology so he can become a hero in the modern day. So people all love him. That seems quite... That. Yeah, that seems like quite an interesting character for Pratt to play. Now, do I actually think he's going to get a DC role? Look, he's a busy man. And he's going to probably be contractually obligated to return... A Star Lord, he's probably got a couple of films on his contract still to do. Now, this is just about working it out with James and seeing when the best time for him to return is. But I, st- I don't think I. He's saying he'll do it, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think it'll happen. I just think it'll take some time. Yeah, a, a lot of the things in. You know, DC, but it's, it's it's the same with Marvel now, to be honest. It's like, this shit's going to take a while for it to, to come to fruition, because, you know, Marvel's having to rejig everything, DC's just getting reset. Yeah, it's now, almost so... like, the, the it's almost like, as of next year, instead of DC that were playing catch-up to the MCU, yeah, it's almost like next year, they are both at a, the same point. Yeah. It's obviously, like... Marvel's Marvel's obviously you know just in case anyone comments. Yes, we know Marvel's been going at it for a, a lot longer with the MCU, but we mean in the sense of it's not going to be like, oh, we get Civil War, oh, we get Batman v Superman, oh, we get the Avengers, oh, we get Justice League. Then it, that's not what we mean. It's just it'll flow a lot better. You know, they'll have their own sort of pace in what they want to do. So yeah. that's that's what we mean by it, in case anyone... Yeah, no, Trust definitely. Me. And I, I mean as well of, like, Marvel not being so out there already and just being on top of the game and DC trying to play catch-up to that. Yeah. From the, Marvel's coming off a few, a few misses. They're only putting out one film this year. But still, then again, that does put them in better you know because I think we all know Deadpool and Wolverine is going to be at least good now if it's not it could be it could be terrible who knows but I think we all think it's going to be at least good that still puts them in a better position for next year because people will see Deadpool and Wolverine and go I want to see the next Marvel movie now but if Captain America Brave New World sucks ass that's going to roll on to Fantastic Four, roll on to Thunderbolts. So they need to keep that momentum going. So 
that's why in 2025 they're going to be in a very similar spot. But then again, you know, James Gunn's only got Superman coming out next year for DC. So, you know, but then again, it is the start of their universe. Yeah. But yeah, equal foot in for this. Should be good to see. I want to see Chris Pratt in anything. I like Chris Pratt. I like you, Chris Pratt. So, we don't hate you. We like you in things and stuff and movies. Yeah. And TV shows sometimes. Yeah. Parks and Rec. Right, let's get on to our next topic. George Miller. He's just worked with Chris Hemsworth on Furiosa. And now he's saying he wants to direct the next four movie. He says he will do anything with Chris Hemsworth. I don't know what he means by anything. Hopefully he doesn't get too deep into that. But still, he will do anything with Chris Hemsworth to work with him. George Miller directing 4-5. For those who don't know, the director George Miller, the Mad Max films. Yes. And, and the upcoming Furiosa. And at least we forget, Happy Feet. Shit, happy feet with fire. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think of a George Miller spin on Thor? Do you think it would work well? Yeah, because I, I think what they want to do is take, take it to a, a bit of a serious point with the character now. I think, you know, Marvel can clearly see that people are getting a little sick and tired of the funny, funny Thor... Which, in all fairness, you know, in Ragnarok, in Infinity War, Endgame, yeah, he had his funny moments, but his whole arc throughout those films was just really sad. Depressing. Yeah. Not as in, like, oh, it's depressing to watch. It's just, like, he's literally lost everything. And, yeah. you know, it kind of makes you, like, thinking back to it, it's kind of like, oh, I feel bad for laughing now, seeing Thor just so unfair like but yeah he's had a couple of good runs with being sort of uh, in a comedy where you know he was quite serious in i enjoyed him in the first thor film i i like thought that world i think i didn't really like him too much in... in in avengers he was okay he was just serious yeah nothing nothing i loved the fish know. out of water stuff you know both him and cap at the same time but then again, we you know we've criticised Joss Whedon before in saying that he doesn't he can do ensembles, but it's each character doesn't really have a moment. They just work well together. Together, the Avengers team is the character. Yeah, and that's what he's working with. Um, yeah, yeah, and the then Russo's obviously got each individual character to have a moment and be a different character. Yeah, which I think you know. It, we've not had a really serious Viking esque for in quite a while, I, if if ever really. I would like them to take it into a very gritty, you know, part of Thor's. I, I'd be down to see, you know, it'd be a great way to to just kind of leave what they've done with Thor: Love and Thunder. You know, he's 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 got a sort of adopted daughter now, essentially. Which is his actual daughter in real life, which I thought was was really cool. Um, I really glad that they, you know, it was just a nice little moment for yeah. for them too. Um, but I wouldn't be, you know, opposed to doing a movie set in the past. Now this is where I think George Miller could really exceed in this, you know, with the limited and the technology. You know, a bit of magic here and there kind of thing. I think it'd work. Yeah, it would. But I think if this is going to be the last four film, people want to see a close or an end to the character in some formal way, which we think we might get in the Avengers films, which will be... Yeah, but I mean, look, they're doing, they're doing the Blade film in the past now instead. 
Yeah, so, but that is going to be the start of that character's arc. Yeah, no, you know I get that. I, no, I, I completely get that. I just feel like I can't see anywhere else the Thor character can go because, you know, he's got this now adopted daughter that he's going to take care of. Mm. Can't really, you know, bring out this Viking S Thor unless, you know, you, <laughs> you kill off the kid. <laughs> it sounds fucked. Kill the kid! That's- yeah, I don't think they'll do that. Everyone spam that like button to kill the kid. Jesus Christ. Yep. But I, I don't see how they can do that. I think it would be great for them to just do a sort of like in the past film and then in Avengers, say, Secret Wars or even Kang Dynasty, Thor gets a good couple of moments in that. He maybe gets his arm walloped off. Or he needs even to lose he, the arm. he needs to lose the he arm. Lose, Maybe he loses the arm, maybe he doesn't, or he gets killed off, which we speculated for quite a while. Yeah. That happened in Kang Dynasty, just to give Kang that oomph of like, oh shit, he just killed Thor. Yeah. No. Um. I, I, you know, I like your ideas. I think it will go off what you were saying a bit. Um. Not so much uh, love, because that's the name, minute. Not so much love gets killed. Maybe captured. Someone wants to use her eternity powers or whatever the fuck she's got. And it's for trying to rescue her. Like a Logan-esque film. And you ready for the title? Odin's son. And it's gritty, it's R-rated, they'd never do it, but I'd love to see that, just because it's R-rated as well doesn't mean it would be good. I mean, shit, if it's George Miller, I mean... I'd love to see him just cut someone in half with fucking Stormbreaker. Yeah, I I would love to see sort of a very gritty Chris Hemsworth just go full Thor, full Viking, it would be awesome to see. The robotic eyes stop working, so there's an eye patch back yeah. again yeah oh yeah and i yeah. think miller's a great fit for it because if you look at mad max the original shit he ain't afraid of killing families <laughs> i mean i i think potentially yeah they, they've still got a lot of things they can do with setting up a story like say one of the nine realms is like fuck this, Odin's gone, Thor's not, yeah. you know, Asgard's gone, but it's still around, it's new Asgard, but they're like, Odin conquered us, and then put us under his protection, and it's like, no, we want to be free of this now, you know, if Asgard is free of it, why can't we be free of it kind of thing, and maybe yeah. that's how they sort of set it up, and, you know, like you say, with, with, uh, with uh, love, you know, they want something to do with her powers that could give them the, the, the yeah. power to, to do this. So, I, yeah, there's a lot of cool ideas, I think, floating around. But we'll see. Odin's son. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. That will be the that title. Be cool. for the... No, it won't be the title. It won't be the title. That will be the title for no, the No, because you're going to get movie. some good saying it's clickbait. Well, I'm not putting that as the title. They've got to watch the video to get this insider mm. scoop. Odinson. Mm. No, Kyle? Thor Odinson? No, just skip the four out of it. Say it with me. Say it with me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get your hands up. You're going to make me look like an idiot if you don't. You already do. All right, one more time. <laughs> You're wearing a Spider-Man t-shirt and you have Odin a American pillow on your bed. <laughs> Shut up, mate. You've got a halo needler behind you. Ah, it's actually a Nerf gun as well. Wow, that makes it so much worse. It's limited edition. <laughs> yeah, like your dad. I pre-ordered it like a year before it was supposed to come out, and then 150 quid just came out of my bank. I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of days later, a fucking needler shows up to me. Nerf gun shows up to me, Dawson. Yeah. Ah, oh. okay. Thanks. Right, no. let's get on to our final topic. 
Marvel is hunting leakers. Specifically, can we get some toast? Let's just read this from IGN. Uh, Marvel Studios has filed a subpoena with Instagram to learn the identity of the Can We Get Some Toast account. Now, we know Can We Get Some Toast. We've used him as a source many times, which has repeatedly leaked private information about films and TV shows, including the upcoming Captain America Brave New World. Now, uh, as reported by Torrent Freak, Marvel's subpoena follows an Instagram story post from Can We Get Some Toast, which allegedly contained leaked footage of the upcoming film. The leak was discovered by a senior Disney paralegal. Right. I'm a bit torn on this, because... Obviously, we've used this person as a source before. You know, back in the early days of the channel, we were talking about pretty much everything. Yeah, because there were not much to talk about. Yeah, you know, going through with the, the, with the strikes, the strike and everything. I think we've been really good lately. You know, we're not talking about plot leaks. We're talking, you know, mainly if we're talking about these people, we're talking about casting. Who's and theories. Really, we like theories. to do a bit of theories, you know. Yeah you know, casting, who's going to be in that, and what films are coming up, who's going to be directing, who, you know, who they're talking to for certain roles. That's what we kind of stick to these sources for now. We haven't, mm -hmm. you know, especially after the Deadpool and Wolverine photos were coming out and Ryan Reynolds was like, you, you cunts, stop. We kind of was like, all right, fair enough. But... I think this is good for the film fan community. Yeah, we used Can We Get Some Toast as a uh, source before. But we need to, as our channel, if we want to grow it, we need to talk about casting and stuff like that that everyone else is talking about, theories that everyone else is talking about. We need to be on the same playing field. Marvel going after someone like this now? It's, it kind of sucks for them because they've obviously built a career off doing this, but it means a lot less stuff is going to get out because people might be a bit more... Ooh, now. And I think Marvel would have been happy with this, just letting it go, you know, and be like, no, let's... No, yep, whatever. It's just a rumour for now. But the fact that they uploaded a part of the film to an Instagram story? No, I, I don't agree with that at all. It, that's... That's alright, you can be that person who makes rumour, you know, or even gets legitimate sources and puts the information out there to get people talking and speculating. We like that stuff. But if you're actually showing bits of the film, I don't care if it was a second or 30 seconds or half the film. That's... I want to be able to see that for the first time in the cinema if it's not you know i choose to watch the trailers but yeah no what what do you feel about this you know they want his identity they're trying to get his identity off instagram now so they can serve him up and say motherfucker you've got to come to court do you think this is an overall good or bad thing for i i think i'm on the same as you it's like it doesn't matter this happening. I think maybe this might put a warning to leakers now. It's like, yeah, don't do these, not leaks, just spoiling, like yeah. showing the film. I think that'll put a big warning to to leakers. Well, I don't think the leaks will stop after No, this. They, they never will. They never um, will. It's, it's always going to happen. But do I think this is sort of a good thing? Yes. But again, leaks will happen, so it's like it doesn't matter too much. But I think again, that's you know just it might like like I said, like I just said, it it just means that the movie showing the movie is wrong, essentially. Yeah. No, and there is stuff that I see that I avoid that we won't speak about when I'm putting the show together and stuff like that because when you're putting it out there, it's going to ruin it for everyone else anyway 
and you just want to kind of keep that for in the cinema. You know, it's hard for us to avoid stuff like this because we are in that that area. You know, I know on days like just little things like this. This is how much like social media is like kind of ruined your TV watching experience. You know, I go to work. I'm expecting I'm going to have to be doing it when the boys comes out, season four. I go to work. I've got to just uninstall uh, YouTube on my phone because, you know, when we did a break, first thing I'll do, I'll click on YouTube, first thing that pops up, oh, Homelander kills Butcher or something like that. Like a spoiler from the show. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake. I, I want to yeah. wait until I get home to watch it. So we're so connected to that world that things just automatically get spoiled for us. I know the week Deadpool and Wolverine come out, I'd, I might even just leave my phone off. Because I, I remember Etern- when Eternals came out, I was. I think this is when I really made the decision. I was at work. Just got my phone out at like four o'clock. I was finishing in an hour and we were seeing the film at six and I was meeting you down there. Flip my phone up. Oh, Icarus turns evil. It's like, motherfucker. So, you know, that stuff like that when the film's close to coming out. But then the stuff we get like recommended all the time. News stories, stuff on my phone. But yeah, like I say, we have used Can We Get Some Toast Before as a source, but us as a channel, we have really, I'm going to say we've really tried to better ourselves and not spoil things and just talk about casting, you know, who might be, who might be in the film, really try to leave out story details. Yeah. So, because we don't want to be ruining anything like that. So, yeah. What do you think is going to happen to this person? I'll say when they get caught, because I think by law, Instagram has to turn over the uh, the data. Well, I mean, it's Big Fine like... or Kevin Faggy Sniper. Yeah, but I mean, are they going to get him? You know, he, this guy could be... Using a VPN, he well, it's not Osama bin Laden, names. Kyle. I don't, you know. Yeah, but it's it's like you can literally make an email, and say Instagram account, or a fake name. It's how are they going to identify this? They're, they're going after IP address and everything. Yeah. Then again, yeah, if he's using it. a VPN, who knows? I think what the real, I think what they're all bothered about is, I think they don't want it to be someone who's working in the company. Because if it is, they'll be... It probably is. Well, it's how it's getting out there. It's getting out there from someone who's working in the company. Yeah. What if it's Kevin Feige? Oh my God, wouldn't it be hilarious if it were Kevin Feige? (laughs) That would be pretty fucked. (laughs) Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Right. Could be someone from Sony. Ooh. Trying to fuck it up for, for Marvel. Hell yeah. Disney Marvel, I mean. It's like, oh, shit. I'm gonna get you. Ruin it for everyone. Yeah, have a fifth Venom movie. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, right, that'll do us for today. Kyle, anything you want to add before we go? Uh, no. No. We might have a show for you tomorrow because Kyle can't do Wednesday. It just depends on the news. Which. Yeah, I can't do Wednesday. I won't be able to do Thursday either. So we're definitely doing tomorrow. Even if we're going to stand there and just tell jokes about each other. Yeah. Or talk about high school memories. No. Why not? Or we could stream it and count how many times Kyle farts while we stream. 
because I was playing Fallout with him yesterday and it must have been about six times. And I didn't even acknowledge most of them. I only acknowledged the big ones, but you just hear him in the back like... So. Every game Fallout sometimes. Don't mean you need to shit your pants. Yes, you do. All right. Well, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, show us to your mother, all that good stuff, and we will see you guys in the next video while Kyle does a handstand with an erection and tries to suck his own balls. See you later.